QuickBooks Online 2023 Location Tracking. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again back to the tab to the middle reports on the left we want the balance sheet report and then we're going to tab to the right this time reports on the left and change it up to the income statement otherwise known as the p l the profit and loss close the ham boogie we're going to look for the month of march this time to get a clean report 0101 not 0103 0123 to 033123 and nothing's in it that's what we want perfect tab to the middle closing up the boogie ranging it from uh, 030123 to 033123 and run it and nothing's in that one let's tab to the left we're now going to look at the location tracking now just a quick recap we've been looking at these tools that are kind of over and above the normal kind of support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it a double entry accounting system adding another dimension typically a column to the income statement in chronological order starting with the jobs or sub customers which are found in the customer area over here and then we went to the classes and then we went to the projects and now we're looking at location tracking and next time we'll look at the tags however if you're going to group these together as more similar tools you would think of the jobs or sub customers similar to projects because they're linked to a customer and then the other three classes location tracking and then tags as being similar in nature so this will be similar to the classes so when you're thinking about projects remember you're thinking about something that ties to a customer you're breaking out the income statement by customer which will include the projects as well as the sub customers and then when you're thinking about tags location tracking and the the classes you're thinking about assigning a separate class to break out your income statement by these separate things classes location tracking and the the tags so we can turn this on as we saw in prior presentations by going to the cog up top and account and settings so then we go to the advanced within the advanced settings we're going to go into the categories where we have the class tracking and location tracking opening it up we talked about class tracking in a prior presentation that's the older tool location tracking is copying a lot basically from the class tracking and adding a few things to it that are a little bit different than the class tracking when we think about these two tools in our normal like profit and loss reporting situation they do similar things we're going to assign a class or location tracking we're looking at our profit and loss report and we would like to be able to break out another uh, kind of component breaking out columns of our profit and loss report as we saw with the class tracking breaking it out by class now if we've already broken stuff out by class then then we want to do it we want to do something else to break out our profit and loss by something else other than class then we might have to then move to location tracking or the use of the tags is one reason why we might use uh, location tracking just for our reporting components here so if i go to my class tracking now notice that location tracking from a reporting standpoint is actually a little less robust than the class tracking because the class tracking allows you to to have this option to break out a class per line item 
as opposed to each the whole transaction be assigned to one class so every transaction has at least two accounts affected you can assign at least one of those accounts the, the income account usually uh, if you have multiple income accounts to multiple line items or multiple different classes which is useful when you're allocating expenses for example so you have more flexibility there with the class tracking whereas the location tracking the entire transaction is going to be applied to a particular location the location tracking however has a little a few different options when you when you add uh, the locations for some of the internal reports and the reports that you're going to be sending out uh, to clients that, that might be some a reason to use the location tracking that's a little bit outside possibly uh, than just trying to track your profit and loss report so we'll take a look at that notice that if you hit this drop down you've got location division department uh, prop, uh, property so whatever you choose here doesn't mean that you necessarily have to use it for that function that primarily means that's what's going to show up when you search for like the classes here when you search for location it's going to show up by location if you use location as the name but if you wanted to use it for something other than that just for another tool to break out your columns according to something other than than the classes and that's what you're using it for then you could use it for something other than you know whatever the name happens to be uh here so that's going to be the general idea of the location tracking we will uh, turn it on so we're going to save it and so i'm going to close this out and then in order to list your locations you can go to the cog up top i would go to all lists and then look at your uh, locations locations and then i've added two here california and nevada let's add some sub locations just to get a feel for how this might work so if i said new item i can say this is let's say this is location one for california i'm going to make it a sub location here now so i have uh california to sub location of california and then you've got these other options that you don't have on the class tracking so this location has different titles for uh for the sales form so on the sales form maybe you have a different title so i'm going to say location title title one this location has a different company name when communicated with customers so this is going to be california name right it has a different name and that gives you that flexibility for those external this location has a different address so now we're going to say California address. This location has a different email address. And then this location has a different phone. So which is of course 555-555-555. So, so that's some so more of the documentation that you might be providing to, to uh, the client it has some more of that detail. So I add a new one just so I can have location 2 L to california and i won't add all the other sub stuff here and save that now if i look at my forms then if i open this back up and i say plus and an invoice which is typically a form that would go out to a client and if i was to make the invoice let's just say customer number one and i don't add a location here then let's take a look at the preview of it so we want to say print preview of this invoice and you can see up top you got the test company that's my file name and the address and so on uh, on the invoice if i close this back up and now i've got my location if i assign it to that location uh location one and i'm gonna say okay I, and now let's take a look at the preview print preview then it's got th those changes that i made for the address and so on up top in the name so that uh is something that's for kind of internal use that the location tracking does a little bit differently than than using location tracking just to break out basically your profit and loss report so that's another kind of use of the location tracking also just realize the location tracking on the downside doesn't have as as nice an integration with payroll you would think with location tracking you would be able to assign particular employees to that location 
you don't have as much option to do that. You do have the option with class tracking. So if your primary purpose is over here on the profit and loss report, then sometimes you might be might think that the class tracking would be better even if you're trying to break out by location if one of your attempts is to break out payroll by employee assigned to a particular location because because the class tracking allows you to do that if your location tracking is is partially in order for you to have different names and whatnot that are going to be given to external reports to clients then that would be another reason why you might use the location tracking over the class tracking and of course you might use the two in conjunction uh, with each other as well let's go ahead and just record this i put a customer i'm going to put it on three one so labor i just put it into to labor and let's save and close it and i'm going to also change this second one to be a sub account i'm going to edit this it needs to be a sub of california one or california <laughs> All right, so then if I go over to my profit and loss report and run it, and let's bring this out just to March now, 033123, and run it there. So, and now I'm going to break this out, not by class, but by the location. I had to refresh the, the page because I turned on location tracking, but there it is, location tracking, run it. So there it is. So now I've got California and then I've got the subcategory because I put it in a subcategory. So note the difference of using a sub location. It's going to kind of try to house it under California. It's going to make the number of columns a lot longer because you're going to have California, the sub, and then uh, the total, as opposed to using class tracking and location tracking, in which case you'll have a whole nother set of columns up top for class tracking and then uh, the location tracking. So other than that, it works in a similar way as, as uh, some of the other tools we took a look at. So if I say, let's make an expense item up top and say we're gonna make an expense item and we're gonna say this is gonna be for vendor two. And then I'll just say, let's just change, I'll use these items down below and do the same kind of thing. But let's say this for 1,400. And let's say this is for 600 and uh and so notice we could make it billable and pull it over to to a customer but the location tracking isn't tied to a particular customer so i'll just record that and let's say save it and close it did i assign it to a location i didn't even assign it to a location did i let's go back on over here and run it notice i did that on purpose because then if you don't assign it to a location it goes like the class tracking into not specified and like with the class tracking you would like to have everything specified to a location usually and then the not specified area will tell you if you messed up you didn't assign something to a location then i can drill back down on it and assign it to a location i can go back into it and then when I assign to a location, I have to assign the entire transaction up top. Let's this time go to, to the second location uh, here and I'll say save and close. And then if I go back on up top and say back to my report and run it just to make sure it's running. So now we've got this amount was assigned to the first location. These are assigned to the second location total for the sub locations and then uh, the total on the right hand side. And let's go back on over and then do another one. I'm gonna say this time, I'm gonna say it's an expense. And let's say this is gonna be for vendor one, we'll say categories of utilities. I'm not gonna put any classes in it. It's just gonna be for, let's say this time location, Nevada. So it's on three one, okay. So there's gonna be our expenses decrease in the checking account the other side going to utilities let's save it and close it and then if i go to my balance sheet by the way and break that out uh, by locations i got to refresh the screen let me refresh it and so there we have it so now i can hit the locations and run it so now we've got our locations broken out here now notice that quickbooks might be a little bit better on the balance sheet to break out location by location 
because we're assigning the location to the entire transaction. But still, you can't really count on the balance sheet to be perfectly lined up because these tools are generally focused more on uh, the income statement. So you'll start to think, well, things aren't in balance per location kind of kind of thing. But if you assign one location to the entire transaction, it's more likely to be able to, to work on the balance sheet than when you start assigning line by line different classes, for example. If I go back on over here, so there we have it. Now we've got our Nevada one. Now notice the problem with location tracking is that if I put like an expense form and I'm gonna go vendor one, if I wanted to assign these two utilities to two different locations, California and Nevada for whatever reason, which oftentimes you, you do because you might be assigning certain expenses that you're paying for both locations to, to each one using some percentage method or something. You can't do that with the locations because the locations are up here assigned to the full transaction as opposed to the classes where you can do that. So that's gonna be one of the limitations of the location tracking. It makes it a little bit easier, but if if you don't have to assign per, per line item, but if you need to assign per line item, then of course that becomes a problem because you can't do that. So that's one of the things you wanna keep in mind when you're thinking, what are you using location tracking for? I'm gonna leave it without uh, saving that. Then there's the question of, do you want to use, like if I had multiple locations and then I had departments, how do I wanna do that? Do I, I could use either location tracking or classes and then use these sub categories in order to account for the department. So I might have California and then a subcategory of admin, a subcategory of of sales, which gives me this nice breakout of the full amount for the California location, subcategory, subcategory, and then the total. But you also come up with a with a long kind of report and you're not easily able to, to categorize by like admin over the entire company, right? I can't, I, I can't get a column as easily for admin for California and uh, Nevada, right? And your, your other option would be to run these two things together. Say I'm gonna use the location tracking for the two states. And then maybe I use, uh, maybe I use uh, class tracking for locations within those states or for departments within uh, within the location so that I can run a whole nother set of columns up top uh, and, and, and then I can filter. So for example, if I, if I enter my transactions here and I, I also use class tracking, which we turned on and say we want expenses and I'm gonna, I'm gonna allocate the expenses to vendor one. And this time let's say it's supplies supplies, expense, boom. And let's say that is uh, one, one, two, four class. This time I'll say class. I have business and professional. I'll keep that B and then supplies. That's not supplies, supplies here. And let's say that's for uh, 600 and that's for P. And this is happening. Okay, so now I'm breaking it out by class and it's assigned to the uh, Nevada location. Now those classes, you might say it's, it's within Nevada and it's basically for admin maybe in Nevada and then, and then sales in Nevada. Let's save and save and new and let's do one more. And let's say this ha this is on vendor two and i'll say this is supplies again supplies not for the items let's close that close that category supplies and let's say this is for two two thousand i'm using that number a lot two <laughs> two one 40 and let's say this is for 
business, but this is for California now, location, and then supplies, and this is gonna be 31276. It's a lot higher in California because we waste money. California wastes a lot of money. We'd like to spend like crazy. So we're gonna say, okay, so let's do that. And then we'll save, save it. And then on the income statement, I can see it broken out by location, California and Nevada. Uh, and if I want it, then I can filter that location by the departments. So for example, now I can go back up top and I can say using these two things together, I can customize and filter and say that I'm gonna filter by class. So I'm looking at it by location, but then I wanna filter by class, just looking at the business, for example, and then run it. So now I've got California filtered and Nevada, but that are filtered by the business items. And if I wanted to, I can also then go to customize and, and run it by, by classes, which now gives me uh, my whole income statement by class now. So now I get a whole nother set of columns, which still totals up to the total income statement. And if this was representing my, my admin and my sales, I can see the total admin and sales here kind of together for both locations, California, and Nevada in this case, and then I can filter by location if I wanted to. So I can look at it this way and then customize up top and filter now by location. And so I can say, I wanna filter it by just the California or whatever. So th that's what you kind of got to think about and visualize when you're trying to say, okay, if I have sub, if I have subcategories, do I want to make them parent classes and subclasses where I'm going to get this long kind of horizontal report with these subcategories within it? So I've got California sales department within California and then, or else you have, you have, you could have a California and then three stores that are located within California and then Nevada three stores located within that, which are going to have a very all across the headers up top. Or do I want a situation where I want to be able to break out a whole separate line of columns that will sum up to the total and then be able to filter by those different areas like we have here where you've got California, Nevada as locations, and then the admin and the sales, for example, as as classes and then you can you can run a, a report just showing admin and sales you know together and then and then the locations together so you know there's different and, and then the filtering options so when you start putting them together it gets a little bit how you're going to visualize how this whole thing should be constructed and which tools should you be putting together in combination with each other okay then there's also the the, the last thing to touch on is the payroll thing here uh, remember that with, with classes, you've got more flexibility with the payroll. So if you're running payroll within QuickBooks, if I hit the drop down up top and I wanted to look at my payroll settings, which I turned on just to look at, you might be able to look at it with a free 30 day trial. And I go down to the bottom tier, then notice I've, I've got this capacity to turn on class tracking, but not location tracking at this point in time. So that's why the class tracking is a little bit easier possibly to break out even if you're using locations for California and Nevada, if you can assign each individual employee to the class that they, to the place they're gonna to go to by class, that, then if that's what you're using it for, classes might be a little bit easier than locations uh, in that sense. But uh, even if you're using locations, you can use maybe your journal entry method that we talked about in some of the prior uh, format. So let's just, for example, if you process payroll uh, with with the location tracking, let's just see if I can process payroll if they let me do it. Again, I've been processing payroll to test it out here. And I'm just going to say she worked 10 hours, boom, and preview. Well, hold on a sec. I want to go back and I want to put this in uh, March if it's possible. Let's do it uh, here. 
I don't think they're going to allow me to put the pay date back there, though. That's the problem. Let's try it, though. Uh, let's say it's got to be after, <laughs> after the, right there. Uh, you cannot enter a check date that is earlier than 4-1. All right, whatever. So then we'll say payroll, submit. Okay, they're giving me issues with the date. So I'm going to put the date up in the current day just to run this thing. And then I'll put 1040 and it's 182. Let's finish it. Uh, okay. So then if I go back on over here and run it, I had to increase the date range to 531 and then I've got location tracking and run it. And the, the basic idea here would be that the, if, if I was to see this by location, I can't break out the payroll by location. So they have it over here in the non-specified area. And we could do the same technique we saw in prior presentations. I might just run the payroll reports and look at each employee by location and then just make a journal entry allocating the wages from here to the proper column, which I could do with a journal entry just to wages, but just but, but just allocating a different location uh, to them. But I normally wouldn't touch any of the payroll lines. So I would rather just make another account like we did with the classes and the projects and just make another line item down here to be equal and opposite to let's say that 800 so I can break this thing out to wh whatever I want by location then and, and, and not mess with the actual payroll line. So you can actually do that with the journal entries because you because the journal entry allows you to, if I go to the first tab, I'm going to say uh, plus, and then we're going to enter a journal entry. You might say, well, the journal entry is going to just allow you to assign one location for the whole thing, but they actually do have a separate location line, line by line, similar to what they have with the class tracking with this form, because it's not like a default, like check or invoice type of form. So for example, I could just make another account called like wages for by location this time, similar technique that we saw in prior presentations. And I'm just going to say, well, this is going to be an expense type form and other expense, uh, other business, just for an example. And I'm going to say that we want to reduce the 800 that's not classified. So I'm not going to put, you know, a location for that 800. And then I'm going to put it into the proper classes. Let's say it's wa same account wages. Uh, what did I call it? Wages location, wages location <laughs> right there, wages by location. And then let's say that we had 600 that are going to go into location for Nevada and then uh, 200 wages by location, 200 is going to go into to California. So notice that it's letting me break out line by line on the journal entry. Notice the accounts are all the same, but I'm trying to break out column by column with a journal entry and reallocate this way, which is, isn't too difficult to do. It's not too tedious. So if I save and close that, let's check it out, see if it does what we would expect, save it or run it. So now I didn't mess with this payroll line item because I don't want to have stuff in the general ledger that's going to mess up any kind of payroll reporting. Instead, I'm going to put something equal and opposite to it. You might even make it like a, this, this line item be a sub account of the wages. So they're kind of connected so you can see they're right next to each other. But it's going to be equal and opposite typically. And then I can reallocate to Nevada and California to my classes, to, to the classes that I wanted to allocate to. So that's that's a technique that, that you can use and use the location tracking. That's usually one of the, some of the complaints I've seen with the location tracking. Uh, and so, so you could do that. So then to recap the whole thing, class tracking, location tracking are kind of similar. The class tracking has a little bit more functionality to break out line item by line item. So it could be useful and more flexible for your reporting needs. But the location tracking has that added thing where you can where you can basically give your invoices a different name or something like that by the different locations, which is kind of neat. 
And then when you put these two things together, class tracking and location tracking, the question is, do you want to use sub classes or sub locations, which will end up with a, a, a longer, a wider report that has the classes and the subclasses in it that gives you that that kind of housing of the subclasses or sub locations in the classes? Or do you want to be able to run a whole nother income statement with a whole nother set of columns that still totals up to the total and then use the classes and and the locations as filtering options and be able to filter and generate reports that way.